My grandmother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease when I was about nine years old. Um, and, and so I remember thinking, um, really not knowing what the disease was. I remember writing in my diary, Grandma's diagnosed with Alzheimer's, but really having no idea how that was going to impact my family. Um, and so over the years of caring for her at her home, um, we saw lots of different challenging symptoms, um, starting with her memory, um, not really being able to remember things, um, eventually not being able to drive, cook, quilt, things that she's done her whole life um, were suddenly lost. Um, and, and so we really saw the disease from that point to whenever she eventually passed away um, from Alzheimer's. And so that was a really hard thing to watch uh, her go through the disease, but then also how it affected my family, um, particularly my uncle. He was her primary caregiver, and um, it, it was really hard to see hobbies, um, things that he liked to do kind of fall to the wayside because he had to care for her. Um, and so we tried to be as supportive of a family as possible, um, but a lot of things do fall to the primary caregiver. Caring for somebody with dementia is very difficult because there's behaviors that you can't control and it's just difficult to, to, know, to care for somebody that was your parent or your sibling or your, your um, even your children sometimes you have to care for with dementia. And if they don't know you, they don't know who you are, they don't know that you're related at all, it's just very emotionally stressful. And the statistics are that 60% of the caregivers caring for someone with dementia die before the, one, the person that they're caring for. So that's a huge statistic and um, it's just very difficult caregiving for a person with living with dementia. So after just seeing my family experience Alzheimer's with my grandma, I really wanted to learn as much as I could about the disease. So whenever I went off to college, I started um, looking into geriatric social work and interned at the Alzheimer's Association um, and just different organizations that really provided a lot of support for people going through the disease. Um, and and I, I saw a stark difference in whenever my family was going through the disease, we just felt so alone. We had no idea um, really what we were doing and just kind of took each day, um, day by day. And so, um, just seeing all of the resources and all of the help out there, I really wanted it to bring it back to my hometown. And so that was really the idea behind Effingham Area Alzheimer's Awareness and educating, bringing awareness to the disease and just letting people know that there's a community, that we've been there, we know how it is, um, and, and we are here to help. One of my favorite um, additions to the Forget Me Not Resource Center is the Reminiscence Toolkits. Um, from my time as an activity specialist in a nursing home, I really saw the power of um, connecting what people's loves, passions, hobbies, and past experiences were um, to where they were at in the disease. I, um, I had a resident who, he was in the later stages of Alzheimer's, um, really to the point where he was almost nonverbal. Um, but I knew that he had grown up on a farm a as a young boy. And so one day we were doing a farming activity, reminiscing about planning, um, and, and he was able to talk about farming and really share his experiences. Um, and, and it was amazing to see him come alive whenever something that he loved and was passionate about was mentioned. And so these toolkits are really designed to give families give caregivers the opportunity to have that special moment. So we started partnering with the Effingham Library um, right whenever we started providing community education programs. And so really from the beginning, our goals in educating the community really aligned with their mission in being a hub of learning and really providing education to the community um, regardless of age regardless of demographic um, and so I think that was really important to us whenever we started our mission um, and 
and programs in the community. So um, it really slowly evolved from the community programs um, to the Forget Me Not Resource Center, where we really saw um, just an opportunity to connect people with who are coming to the programs to additional resources and continued learning at home. The library is a focal point of the community, so there's a lot of people that know about the library. Um, I would say there's not, I know there's not as many people that know about Effingham Area Alzheimer's Awareness or the Forget Me Not Resource Center, but they know about the library and they know where the library is. And if we advertise enough that the Forget Me Not Resource Center is here, um, that would, that's a big plus for us. So I think it's always a gamble whenever um, a, a library takes on a new project or a new program. Um, you're not sure how well it's going to go over, you don't know if there's a need. Um, and so I was very appreciative of our library contacts um, and just seeing our vision and recognizing, okay, there's a need in the community, this is what we can provide and really working with us. Um, so I know my goal was really always being able to offer the resources regardless of library card. So I grew up in a very small town um, outside of the city limits, so we weren't eligible for a free library card. And so I always grew up wanting a library card, wanting to be able to go to the library. And so that's what I really had in mind for this center um, and, and making sure that whoever needed the resources, they would have them. We wanted the uh, resources to be available to everyone, regardless of having a library card. And so um, we worked with Jana and uh, she came up with a solution which we love. And so now anybody, regardless of having a library card, can come in, take our resources out, and um, have benefit uh, of the use of the resources. We knew that because people didn't have to put their name down to take an item out under the EAAA card, that there was a chance that some items would not be returned. But we had faith in the people of the community that they would do their best to get them back. Uh, we understand that sometimes things get lost in the shuffle and you may not find them until a couple months later, but that's fine with us. And the library was good about um, being okay with that. And um, since we purchased most of the materials ourselves, that worked out and we can always replace something if it doesn't come back after a while. I think whenever we looked at partnering with the library, we really saw an opportunity to reduce the stigma of the disease and holding it in a neutral location. Um, there wouldn't be any judgment of people who would utilize the resource center or come to a community program um, because it's normal. It's normal to come to the library. And, and so that was really important for us and just making it um, available to everyone and just so that they wouldn't have to feel um, any judgment or any um, concern in using the resources. I would say don't be afraid to start the conversation. Um, I think that whenever we first had our, the idea for the Forget Me Not Resource Center, um, we started talking about it, but it, it took a couple years to really see um, the initial idea blossom to what it is today. Talk to the staff, talk, you know, find um, somebody on the staff that understands what your goals are and just um, get a, a um, rapport with them and tell them what you want, what you would like, and see how the, you know, see if it's possible, and then you know, just researching it together, and and um, coming, both of you coming up with ideas, what's good, what the what the library can do, and then what your organization can do, just kind of working together. And so we saw over time just the the increase in attendees for the community education programs, and just seeing the need kind of build. And um, so working with your library staff on recognizing the need, really doing an assessment of, is this going to meet the community's needs? What can we do um, to really be um, the place and be the resource that people need and go from there?